The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, boys and girls and the rest, it's time once again to get out your trapper keepers and your rubber cement and your crippling fear of wet willies. <laughs> Because it's homework time once again here on the good old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> I don't know what you want, Eleanor. What, you want to just show me that toy? Okay, cool. That's a toy. That's awesome. Oh, okay. People of the internet, your attention, please. Put down your dank memes and pay attention! <laughs> Each week, the Pope on Film podcast assigns homework in the hope of bettering its listeners, nay, the nation. And this week's homework assignment is a simple assignment with a simple purpose. It exists to stop Steve from going insane. Yes. If I don't make a YouTube playlist a few times a year, I will go insane. <laughs> and it's just been a long time since Octoman. Yes. So... This week's but homework they're, is but a they're always so much fun. In this they particular are. one, there is just that one video that kind of blocks the rest out, though. It, which one is that? Is that the, the, the Fred Meyer store? Yes. Yes. No, that's amazing. We're going to be talking about that. So this week's homework is a randomly blended backyard, backyard hodgepodge of crazy YouTube videos. It's a YouTube playlist on YouTube, obviously, and it's entitled TPOF Homework EP.131, the Pope on Film Homework Episode 131 playlist. It's 13 videos, some of them fairly odd that I stumbled onto recently, including such crazy-ass things as celebrities smoking pot and 80s lip-syncing. Basically, these are a bunch of videos that I thought that Bunny may or may not fall in love with, basically. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on each and every video in this list because some of them are short, stupid videos. So here's the and the rest videos of the bunch before I get to the main videos that I want to talk about. Some quick takes here. Number one, you can really spin on a go-kart. Yes. Uh, and and uh, in a related story, you can really cut and paste a kid spinning on a go-kart. Yes. <laughs> so that's fun. The Kermit Sings cartoon is funny as hell, and I really, really, really like that video where Kermit is singing to the doing some ditties for the kiddies. Yeah. But it would be funnier if it hadn't been created by one of those pretty white fucking Aryan YouTube celebrities who makes quirky shit for a living. Yeah. Okay. Like like if it, like if, if he was if this guy was just making funny weird videos like that, that would be something. But this is one of those guys where it's like Hey, what would happen if I put a hundred fidget spinners on my face? And it's oh. and you know he gets like two point seven million hits and shit. Yes, and he looks like twenty four, and his nuts haven't dropped, and he's all handsome and dumb. So <laughs> the Kermit sings cartoon is funny, but it'd be funnier if he wasn't one of those YouTube guys. Yeah. Um, Psycho Salad is my jam. It's the Wiggles mashed up with Slipknot. And mm -hmm. it's a great song because it's two ridiculously stupid bands I don't give a fuck about. Because <laughs> I honestly believe that the Wiggles are right up there with uh, Slipknot in the ridiculousness factor. <laughs> so putting the two of those together is really great. Cuphead is a, a new Xbox game based on old 1930s hand-drawn animation, and it looks fucking amazing. Yes. It really does, especially if you know the old, uh, you know, Fleischer cartoons and all that sort of thing, which is why I added one of those cartoons. But that one mm -hmm. got bumped up to the one of the main videos I want to talk about. It looks like a it looks like an interesting game. Yeah. Yeah. And it just it, it perfectly it perfectly. It looks exactly how it's supposed to look, you know? Yes. I, I don't think it's I don't think. House is the uh, home is on the hard drive. It's on my computer, and I'll have to move it from the computer to the hard drive. But my computer sucks. 
So I'd have to get the battery again in order to move it back into the hard drive. I took it off of the hard drive, I think, because it was on Netflix. But now apparently it's off of Netflix, which is ridiculous because they have the TV show on Netflix. And it's just a thing. So with those out of the way, with the and the rest out of the way, let's talk about the biggies. So the first biggie that comes up is Aubrey Plaza smokes pot with the weed puppies. Yes. This is one that I really want to talk about because I am old. I am old enough to have been born in the 70s and raised in the 80s. I'm so goddamn old that this video absolutely fascinates me, and I'll tell you why. This is a celebrity, a bona fide celebrity, an actress, a celebrity on tape smoking pot with two nuns, and she's still allowed to be famous. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Growing up... You could find you like, could find a lot of celebrities out there having lit up on camera. Yeah, but the legalization of pot is still real weird for me. I'm used to telling my kids like, "Don't do drugs." Yeah, and now you have to say that with like a bit of an asterisk. I'm old enough to remember when pot was a career killer. Yes, you know uh-huh. when there's actors and celebrities and they have a good life, but then <gasps> this actor was discovered smoking pot <laughs> and everyone's like oh my god how how dare they we need to we need to interview this celebrity so that they can have the chance to deny it well we're still from the world where bill clinton didn't inhale yes yes you know yeah where 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 that would have been a career Kill, which and, and like that fucking line, okay? That line sums up the entirety of the Bill Clinton years. Okay? It's like it's like, okay, Bill, you didn't inhale. You just fucking straight out lied to us. But it was so charming. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to we're going to just let it go. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna give you a pass. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's weird to me to see a video of a celebrity smoking pot. Yes, that's that is that in and of itself. And the it, weed nuns, the weed, yes, the nuns, weed nuns. Okay. Yeah. Well, first I've seen the weed nuns before, but second, tell me the weed nuns are not characters straight out of a Cheech and Chong movie. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know they're they're yeah. they're running from the cops, and they've got this van made out of marijuana, and they yeah pull off the road, and they're not seen by the cops, and it's this monastery, and you know they go there for sanctuary, and it's the weed nuns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the entire like first act of a major motion picture. Yeah. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg can star in that. <laughs> why is she why is Whoopi Goldberg not allowed to star in that, honey? So just talk about her about her anti breastfeeding. Oh, she's anti breastfeeding? Hmm. Well I'm anti ghost. Well, if you wanna be honest, I would prefer if Whoopi Goldberg didn't breastfeed either. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm against Whoopi Goldberg breastfeeding. <laughs> believe that would come out as like dust (laughs) she's the only person that would be like she's the only person that would breastfeed and it comes out as like uh like milk you gotta add water to well i had the title just that would be sister acts all fucked up nice yeah yeah Whoopi Goldberg Dang and sisters. whatever happened to Elaine Boozler? Oh, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. Drag her. I haven't seen. I miss her. Drag her ass out of retirement. She could be the white nun. Yeah. Elaine Boozler, Whoopi Goldberg, sister acts all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it- 
I'm I'm pretty sure the fat nun's not doing anything either. You could probably get her. Najimi, whatever her name was. Yeah, Kathy Najimi. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think she's doing anything. I'm pretty sure she can put her off, 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 off Broadway show on hold. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's what she's doing. Yeah, I'm probably right. Anyway, I love Aubrey Plaza. I love Parks and Recreation. She was also in Mystery Team. This video only proves that she's just fucking cool as hell. <laughs> So I love Aubrey Plaza. She's fucking wonderful. Number two. The number two big video to come up is called Video Camera Demo Tape. Yes. This 26-minute YouTube video was called by the by avclub.com, quote, 2017's most avant-garde documentary. I and, loved it. And I have got to agree. Yes, I also concur. Do we know what year this video is from? Uh, we kind of. Uh, so the story is, in the early 90s, a dad from Washington State bought a camcorder from a local Fred Meyer store, which I'm assuming is like a big uh, retail box super store, like a, like a Best Buy or a Circuit City or an S-Mart or a Cloud9, you no. know, super stores. No, it's like a so, Walmart. It's yeah, got like a gro- a it's got a grocery store section. It's got clothing. Oh, nice. It's got furniture. Okay. It's got gardening. Yeah, it's got electronics. So, yeah, so it's like a Smitty's. They used to be in Phoenix. In Phoenix, we had Smitty's. Mm. So Smitties. his daughter. Last year, his daughter got a bunch of VHS tapes from her dad's house and went to Costco to transfer them to DVD. And in one VHS, they found this video because apparently the dad didn't realize that when he bought the camcorder way, way, way back in the day, he bought the store's demo camcorder. (laughs) So the daughter put the video on YouTube and it got 36 thousand views in five days yes but they were absolutely unclear as to when the video originated so like you do you sent it to reddit and the reddit people placed the video between winter and spring of 1992 primarily because of the music tracy chapman is playing on the overhead while people purchase the wayne's world 2 soundtrack slaughter and garth brooks (laughs) <laughs> so they so they uh yeah they have placed this video between winter and spring of 1992 they say spring of 1992 but everybody's wearing these big ass fucking jackets and shit so between winter and spring of 1992 if it was in washington like, state they're still wearing those big ass jackets in yeah, july that's a good point. so yeah like spring of 1992 <laughs> i would like to take this time to say that I love Garth Brooks because of Chris Gaines. We should never forget Chris Gaines. Yes. Sorry. That Chris that was his Gaines. that was his like heavy metal version, right? No, they, that was his like a uh, uh, hipster or alternative. Or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, fake persona. Mhm. Yeah. Uh, 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 Garth Brooks released a rock album. Yeah. And it's important that we all never forget that. We must all always remember Chris Gaines. Yeah. So when this video came out, I when this video was recorded, I was a sophomore in high school forcing everyone that I knew to watch Plan 9 from Outer Space over and over again. <laughs> that, is, that is what I was doing at the time that this video was recorded. This video is absolutely fascinating to me. It's a time portal yes. to a different time when everyone wasn't connected to a device. That was this the thing that true. blew me away. Yes. Is that everyone is actually looking around and paying attention. I and- I I loved the people watching quality yes. of this. I yeah, oh yeah. That. And oh, yeah. looking at the different people and figuring out who they are and mocking Make, them for it. And making up stories about them. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And I going, just, oh, look at, see that old guy right there? He's dead now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watched He's it with the now. kids, and I and it was surprising how quickly that we're like, oh, hey, that guy walked back again. Yeah. <laughs> the mullet guy. 
Yeah. Mullet guy. Mullet guy <laughs> was. Come on, tell me, because it's a retail job. He he was definitely an employee. Tell me you haven't seen this before. He wasn't busy. He was fucking looking busy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like he, he that's it. He spent his day just walking around from here and there, never actually doing a goddamn thing. Yeah. And I, I liked the one fat guy that I'm assuming was a manager. He had he had the belly of someone who is a manager at this location and secretly hates his job. <laughs> and he walked by a couple of times and I'm like, oh, there's the manager. I'm assuming yeah. I'm assuming that's the manager. Is that I the love guy? the one guy. I love the one guy who spent like the majority of this video looking at the records. Oh, yes. yes. It was just one guy in the back, and I'm like, oh my god, he's he's literally going to pick up and look at every record in that fucking bin. Yeah. Like, really? You, you don't have anywhere to go? I was one of those kids that was just in front of the camera, in front of the camcorder. Mm-hmm. Ooh, look, I'm making a face. Uh, like, I was definitely uh, one of those kids. Yeah, like Padme. Padme was cute. A little girl that looked yeah. like Padme. Yeah. Yes. And the yep. guy behind the counter. Okay. Behind the uh, the photo. Yeah. Counter. The, the, yes. They Over fucking developed the film, dude. Yeah. They developed film back then. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the guy behind the counter, I I, I could swear I heard him say. Uh, thank you for shopping. And by the way, my band is playing this weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like that's, that was just his attitude. Like I'm just here until my band makes it big. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love this video. I love this video. It doesn't feel like it's almost a half hour long. No, it didn't. We're going, Oh my God, this is going to be long. Yeah, but then we couldn't keep our eyes off of yeah. it. Yeah, right in the beginning, yeah. <laughs> right in the beginning, there was that one woman who walked by the camera, and just by her, her hair, I knew she was looking for the manager. She's going to complain. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yes. There's something just absolutely fascinating yes. about this video. I, I the, And the thing that, that really does kill me is the fact that it seems like people shot different. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah, no, everybody everybody would be would have a phone on them. Everybody would be looking at their phone and everybody would be texting. And, you know, a huge percentage of people would be listening to music and having earbuds in their phone. And uh-huh. just it yeah. seems like everybody was more attentive. Yeah. And yet they still weren't looking at each other. No, no, they yeah. were not. No, looking they still at each weren't. Other. Yeah, and they still weren't looking at each other. But it seemed like like just. People were just paying more attention to their surroundings yeah. in this video. I'm like, holy crap, there is a huge difference here. And and even in this movie, even in this in this found footage genre, I think we would have to call this, okay? Yeah. There was that twist ending. Well, it wasn't quite the ending, but there was a major plot twist that happened here. Because I yeah. was sitting here watching for the longest time. We had that that kind of Justin Bieber kid. That yeah. one kid who thought his haircut was really fucking cool, you know? Yeah. And he was he was like mid shot and he kept looking at something to the left of the screen. And he was looking at it really intently. And he like even squatted down for a moment to look at whatever was on the lower shelf. And I became fascinated by what could be on the shelf <laughs> yeah and at one point the camera moved it's walkman it's walkman hmm. yeah how amazing walkman. How amazing. Yeah. And what was that flash of that face up there what was that flash it's, of that face what the fuck was that as- it seems as if they sold it, these camcorders could take a picture of someone and then superimpose it or in something. the video you're filming, but I don't see any reason why you would want that. Exactly. You know? <laughs> uh, well, ex- you- except for this, because 
That was yeah. weird. Look, the thing had special effects. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That was and the special then, effect. And the special effect was so fucked up. It's like, okay, what the hell just happened there? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? And then it did it again. Yeah. Like, what oh, my God, that? there's a face. Oh, my God, there's a face. Yes. And then, the th- and then if you really put the volume up and listen, number one, you can hear all of the change. Because there's definitely someone behind the camera that's, giving out change and shit, but if you really listen closely, you can hear someone looking for like a like a something with a cassette player. They're looking for like a like what is it? Like a radio with a cassette player? Yeah. Or or saying, no, this one doesn't have a cassette player. This one doesn't have a cassette player. <laughs> that blew me away too, because I love cassettes. My yeah. car plays cassettes. And CDs, and I love cassettes. I'm a big cassette fan. Fucking love cassettes. They, they I want those to come back. I don't know if that's coming. I don't know if cassettes are coming back. I want them to. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to. And that makes me sad. Now, I should have mentioned this in the last section, okay? Yep. But I need to toss it out there since it reached my mind. Okay. Did you hear... So CERN, where they have the Large Hadron Collider, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and it is now the newest hotspot for every conspiracy theory in the world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, they've opened hell, and they've merged us with Universe X, and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. So um, they know they're always under surveillance somehow by people trying to unmask the conspiracies. Yeah. So they had some visiting scientists. I forget what 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 country they were from. Okay, but as a goof at midnight, they had a mock satanic ceremony. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> With a sacrifice and everything. <laughs> oh God! I can already hear people freaking the fuck out. This this blew up for a minute, and then they were like, "Yeah, we just." Totally just fucked with you. That's that's all. Yeah. <laughs> God. Now, another major video on the list was a video called Time for Sushi. Time for Sushi. Okay. This, this bizarre-ass video is the newest part of a fairly interesting mystery... This video is the latest from a YouTuber named David Lewandowski. He has 169,000 YouTube followers, which is impressive since this video is only his third video ever. <laughs> so five I, I, years don't, ago, I don't remember this. Which one is this? Is it the one with the weird, naked, faceless humans moving in? Oh, oh okay. Man. Yes. Yes. So which which almost ago, made me... Which almost made me post on Facebook. Do we really need Japan? Yeah. <laughs> so it, the guy's American. He just apparently lives between uh, uh, L.A. and Japan. Um, so five years ago, he made a name for himself with, with his first video, which is called Going to the Store. Which introduced us all to his first creation with finger quotes. Uh, a, a photorealistic yet utterly impossible uh, naked faceless human who moves in impossible ways. The video currently has 27 million viewers. And it has wow. a number it has a number of like uh, real life parodies of like you know strange people doing their real life version of going to the store. <laughs> so then three years ago he released his second video. Um, which features two in, in naked, faceless, impossible people. That one, it was even bigger than the first one. That one currently has over 31 million people. So I knew that in eventually we would get a third video and he would somehow try to top the other two videos. And boy, was I right. Cause this next video, cause his third video time for sushi, it's set in Japan and it goes all out. There's like a thousand of these people. 
<laughs> and not only does he do his photorealistic uh, naked faceless humans, but also he does a lot more with other things. I specifically liked the train that was in a ball. Yeah. That was rolling to the next station. The, the guy does very good photorealism with his insanity. <laughs> But it's an interesting mystery because literally this is only his third video ever. But, oh, my God, this guy is amazing. I love this guy. And uh, apropos of nothing, I was just looking around my table here where I'm recording. I know you're jealous, Bunny. <laughs> okay. But calm your ass down. I have a free Twilight New Moon bookmark. Ooh. Featuring uh, the wolf pack from the second Twilight movie. And they're all shirtless and brooding. I know you're jealous. And, and sweaty. Yeah, I know you're jealous because you're a huge Twilight fan. But just calm down, okay? Okay. Just calm down. <laughs> this next video is a huge one for me. It's apparently some TV show. Because at the end of the video it says, Thanks for watching and we will see you again next week. It's a video that is titled Valley of the Sun 1960s. I love this fucking video. Yes. That one I went on a little video. long for me, but yeah. But yes. Yeah. I, I miss Phoenix so much. And it's odd because like I've, I've been here for what, five and a half years. I know very few people here in Oklahoma. Plus the fact that it's a heavily white Christian state and I'm a brown skinned, long haired, manic, depressive, pansexual, storytelling, podcaster, cult leader. I stand out is what I'm saying. <laughs> a little bit. I stand out a little bit here. But we stay here because uh, the teens like the high school and there's Tasha's family. And most importantly, it's so fucking cheap. It's so cheap. The gas is like one seventy a dollar and seventy cents a gallon. And the rent is extremely low. And we can we can live comfortably here. I miss Arizona and I would love to go back to Arizona, even though um, the kids would instantly melt. Yes. Can already hear them complaining. We haven't even thought about going to Arizona, and I can already hear the kids complaining. <laughs> um, there's way too many old people because that's where old people go to die. Yeah. And we so couldn't afford Phoenix right now. But I know so many people there. Like, I know everybody there. I know everyone in the state, basically. <laughs> So anyway, this video brings me back, even though it's in the 60s, so much of it is still intact. Like the botanical gardens are still there and the fucking pyramid in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there's a pyramid on the top of a mountain right by the Phoenix Zoo. So you're going through the zoo and then suddenly there's a big ass pyramid that you're not allowed to go to. <laughs> And that's where they said it, too, on the video. That's where the first, second, third, fifth, seventh, eighth, and tenth mayor of Phoenix was buried or whatever. So you they, they buried their mayors in this in a pyramid. Yeah, the first the first mayor of Phoenix ever was so amazing that he was also the second and the third and the fifth and the seventh and the tenth. Oh. So when he, he was considered like the father of Phoenix and he helped create Phoenix. And so when he died for whatever fucking reason, they put him in a goddamn white marble pyramid on top of a <laughs> mountain in the middle of nowhere. But of course this is Phoenix and Phoenix is growing like crazy, like the fucking blob. <laughs> so now that entire place is surrounded. So you're just at the Phoenix zoo and it's really amazing. And you just saw the elephants and holy shit. Why is there a pyramid <laughs> on top of that mountain? So then like the people from Phoenix have to go, okay, it's our first mayor. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so yeah, there's a fucking pyramid in the middle of nowhere. There's so, so there's a lot of things. So a lot of things in this video that are still around. Um, they mentioned ASU, which is really hilarious. They mentioned the Grady Gamage Auditorium. But, of course, they're not from Phoenix, so they called it the Gamage. The Gamage. The Grady Gamage. No, it's the fucking Grady Gamage Auditorium, and Frank Lloyd Wright made it. I spent a lot of time there growing up. Um, 
they they had a bit from the state fair, which was really weird because I went to the state fair every year and I love the fucking state fair. And they mentioned a couple of uh, uh, neighboring cities, and I wanted to 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 go through this. Number one, they spent a lot of time in Scottsdale. Scottsdale is full of rich assholes. Hey, hey. that's Scottsdale. And number two, they mentioned Sin City. They mentioned Sun City, and I turned to my wife and I was like, "Oh my god, they're mentioning Sun City, honey. That's where." That's where all the old people are. It's 99% old people. It's literally just a small town, but it's all old people. It's where all the old people go to die. And then I turn back to the video, and the narrator literally says, quote, I've seen more senior citizens in two days in Sun City than I would have seen in a whole year. <laughs> and it's like, yes, yes. It's all old people. Just the picture a small town, but then there's no kids. That's Sun City. Okay, are they allowed to leave? I, they're allowed to leave, but I don't think they're allowed to bring anyone younger back. <laughs> so that's Sun City. It's full of fucking old people. And they also mentioned Cave Creek, which incidentally is full of meth. <laughs> just, just to let you know, Cave Creek full of meth. That is, that is a very important... Uh, tourist tip yeah it's a good tip for tourists so that's valley of the sun 1960 it went on a little long because apparently it's an episode of some tv show that they don't mention the title of but i fucking love it and it's wonderful the next major video on the list is a cartoon called swing you sinners yes i love the title but then i quickly got confused because it didn't look like bimbo well, well, here's Is the story. Is it like a got, proto bimbo? Kind of. I got the story of it. I, I fucking love this video so much. It's a bizarre ass cartoon from 1930, not the 1930s, but literally 1930. It's a dark, surreal, and altogether righteously fucked up cartoon from the Fleischer Brothers featuring my all time favorite dog that also fucks a human woman. It's the return of Bimbo! Yes. Betty Boop, boyfriend. Yay, the cartoon is amazing and work-related. It is in the public domain, just FYI, <laughs> if, if anybody out there wants to cut some shit up. Um, this was pre Hayes Code, and the Hayes Code also cracked down on cartoons. So, like, basically this entire cartoon couldn't exist after the Hayes Code. Um, uh, cartoons like this one were the basis for the video game Cuphead, which is why I added the Cuphead trailer. Yeah. to the video because Cuphead was based in a large part on this one cartoon. But what happened in the Fleischer Brothers studio is the Fleischer Brothers were really sick of the animators. So what happened is they said, okay, all you animators are fired. We're the Fleischer Brothers. Our names are going to be famous in the future. Everyone's going to remember the Fleischer Brothers. Mm hmm so, so they fired all of the animators and brought in a brand new team of animators who had never done animation before ever. Wow. Okay. So all, I, so the only thing I can think of is that literally it's like, hey, you, 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 you're doing animation now, but I've never done animation. It doesn't matter. It's just animation. Nobody gives a crap. Come over here and do this <laughs> bimbo cartoon. Which is why it looks so bizarre and there's weird mistakes and it's really like insane yeah. and it looks in no way like Bimbo. That's because this is basically a first time student film done by a major studio, kind of. <laughs> that's what that's what not only is it weird, but it's even weirder when you realize that the people who did this cartoon had never done a cartoon ever. That it just added to the bizarreness of the fucking thing. Yes. But it's fucking beautiful, and I love it. Absolutely love it. I saw it with Maxwell it, and Maxwell. It's, yeah, it's it's you you watch something like that, and you you have to consider that whoever did it's really disturbed. Yeah, I watched the car. I I was watching the whole playlist, and then Maxwell came and said, "What are you watching?" And I'm like, "Oh, this." I'm watching this playlist. A cartoon's going to come on. Do you want to watch it with me? And he's like, yeah. Do you want to so watch it? Do you want to watch it? <laughs> and then like two minutes into it, he's like, daddy, can you hold me? Oh. I'm like, oh, of course. Here, sit on my lap. We can watch this together. 
And the surprising part is is the ending because it just fucking ends. There's no end to it. There's well, no bimbo. Our... It's fine. It just ends. Well, he went to hell. Yeah. That's it. He was a dirty sinner. Our hero, the cute little bimbo, was a dirty sinner and deserved to burn in hell for eternity. The end. The end. <laughs> yeah. It's the Mr. Toad's wild ride. Yes. Of animated cartoons. Because Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, want to be clear, is a Disneyland ride that ends with you going to hell. (laughs) That's the end of the ride. The end of the ride is literally, you are burning in hell, have a fun day at Disneyland. (laughs) And they pump in like hot air as you're going through hell and you see the devil poking you with his sharp poker. Yeah. They call me Vlad the Poker. So, so uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is an important ride that needs studying. Yes. Because I love the fact that that ride exists. <laughs> so, the, two, two more major videos that I want to talk about, and then we'll end this segment. The, the next major one is about 11 minutes long, and it's called Joe Para Talks You to Sleep. Yes. Maxwell and, and he I saw damn this well, together. He, he came close. Yeah. Maxwell and I saw this video together. Remember Joe Para In Talks fact, that might have been where Jeannie <laughs> left. We saw it last night. Remember the guy, and he trade talks you to sleep, and he's playing. He, he's uh, hitting balls. And uh, listening to his answering machine, you don't remember that? He has a dog next to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I loved this video. It's great. It's even better than harmonizing with your boys. (laughs) Now, I haven't honestly and truly given a crap about Adult Swim since, probably since I lived in California. I remember when... Adult Swim was like rebellious and punk and yada, yada, yada. But I don't know. It got a bit too popular. Yeah. For my taste. Which reminds me, Childish Gambino is the musical rap persona of actor Donald Glover. And he recently announced uh, after his uh, last album came out, which is a wonderful, beautiful album that I've talked about at length here on the podcast. Yes. Um. He was a pretty dirty and filthy rapper, and then before his last album, he just decided, I'm going to be Prince now. <laughs> and so he released an R&B album, which is just absolutely fucking beautiful, and I love his last album, and I've listened to it over and over again. So he kind of shocked me, Childish Gambino did, when during a recent concert, he said that he probably has one more album in him, and then he's going to stop releasing music as Childish Gambino. And everybody freaked out, like, oh my god, why is he stopping? And he he did a wonderful speech uh, in, a, in an interview for some magazine where he yeah. said... I created the persona of Childish Gambino so I could be punk, so I could be different, so I could go against the flow and uh, release music that is different from everything else. But now my music is successful, so what's the point? At some point, you get so successful that you're not being punk, you're just mainstream, and I never wanted to do that. (laughs) <laughs> His last album has a single called Redbone and it's like number 12 on the on the on the Billboard Top 100 singles. Yeah. He, he suddenly has a huge hit and I even looked up the song on YouTube cuz I wanted to hear the song and there are parodies of his song Redbone where it's Redbone as if it was sung by SpongeBob and then there's Redbone, as if it was sung by Cleveland from the Cleveland show. And there's like a hundred of these videos. He must fucking hate that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, poor Donald Glover. You made this musical persona to be like this, to be different and to, to be alternative and to be punk. And now you're a meme. <laughs> you must fucking hate that. I would know I would. You know? So you gotta fucking hate this. So so Adult Swim just became well, too popular. But that's and, why. That's what happened. Yeah. Is that instead of everybody getting fifteen minutes of fame, 
it has been upgraded to 30 minutes, but it is only in meme form. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, if, if, yes, if Andy Warhol were alive, he would have made an amendment. We, we will, we will all be a meme sooner or later. Yeah. So Adult Swim used to be like a cool, different thing that you and your friends discovered, and then Adult Swim just became big, and so I didn't give a shit. But this video, Joe Para Talks You to Sleep, this video reminds me of old school, we don't give a fuck, Adult Swim. And it, it, it's been a while since I've cared about Adult Swim, but oh my god, this video is amazing. It's, it's from 2016, it's a one-off show that they played at 4 a.m., that they literally played at 4 a.m. and listed as an infomercial. Oh, God, yeah. It is from real-life stand-up comedian Joe Para, and it's surprisingly awesome, right? Yes, it is. Oh, my God, I love this video. I love this video so much. But, and hey, but, but it does try to put you to sleep. It, yeah, it literally does try and put you to sleep and hey so you will having... start to feel droopy oh yeah oh yeah i read some review somewhere i think it was on reddit where they talked about like i saw this video and now i feel as if i've taken a shit ton of cough medicine and i'm just a bit loopy <laughs> and afterwards maxwell did say like i'm tired he watched the whole video with me yeah. and it was just amazing and i, I and i love the way that the video ended, and it, this is going to be like my thing. If you're having a crummy day, just think, hey, at least I'm not in jail like Bernie Madoff. <laughs> That's great. That's a wonderful way to look at life. Yes. Now, the last is, video... Is Bernie Madoff a person of significance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He... he uh... He went to jail, a uh, banking scandal, and uh, they made a movie about him. Oh, okay. Uh, now, for some reason, that, that made me think of, I, I don't know why, Joey Buttafuoco. Where is Joey Buttafuoco? I don't know. Uh, but uh, I want to hear Joey Buttafuoco's views. On on Bernie life Madoff. in Trump's America. <laughs> Bernie Madoff is the former non-executive chairman of the Nasdaq stock market, and he admitted and the admitted operator of a Ponzi scheme that is considered the largest financial fraud in U.S. history. Nice. Prosecutors, prosecutors estimated the size of the fraud to be sixty four point eight billion dollars. Wow. Yeah, so he's in jail for a while. They made some like a movie. It wasn't like a movie movie. It was like a HBO movie, I think. Yeah, but he's still in so- he's still in rich person's jail. Ooh. Ooh. These are really good. Mm-hmm. There is um, a there is a very big difference between jail and rich people's jail. Yeah. 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 There you go. He um HBO film The Wizard of Lies. He was played by Robert De Niro. Okay. I knew it was something. I knew it was something. Now let me try Joey Buttafuoco. There you go. I just know how to spell his name. Um, Now, what is he doing now? After his release from prison, Joey and Mary Jo Buttafuoco moved to California, where Mary Jo filed from div- for divorce in 2003. Yeah, that's great, but what's he been doing lately? I don't know why she stayed that long. I mean, look, look. If you find out that your husband is sleeping with an underage prostitute, by getting a bullet in your head, like this is it. This is the news. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why she ever stayed. Yeah. <clears throat> in two thousand. Why did it take till two thousand three? Yeah. Maybe, maybe his insurance was the only way that she could get medical assistance. Good Possibly. point. 
to his and point because we all knew he was an asshole. What? Should he pay for that though? Like her recovery and all of that, considering the fact that he's the reason she got shot in the fucking head in the first place. If Word. your theory is correct, yes. If my oh oh about the medical insurance, yeah. I mean, even if my theory is not correct, yeah, he should still have to pay for that. You know? Yeah. Oh, but he's in jail. I don't think he'd be getting medical insurance in jail though, right? I don't know how that works. I've never been in jail. Yeah. Well, normally, normally back in that, in those days, you wouldn't have gone to jail because they would have felt that your wife getting shot in the head would be enough huh. of a punishment for what you've done. No, that's a punishment for... But he went to jail in particular because he was an asshole and we just all hated him. Like, like you don't get off. Joey Budafuco is is just the same as oh god Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. We we didn't care if there was any kind of insider trading going on, and the insider trading that was going on was for a relatively small amount of money for who they are. But fuck Martha Stewart. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was the same thing with Joey Budafuco. There are a few other people like that as well. Like those are the two that leap to mind, though. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you do you hear Eleanor in the background yelling for Mama? We do. Yes. Yeah. She she is just a talker. She's she's a screecher, really. And now cherry stems. <laughs> she wants she wants cherries. She's yelling for cherries. That's what's happening. Um, <laughs> So, uh, in 2006, Joey Botafuco and Amy Fisher were reunited for the coin toss at the Lingerie Bowl. <laughs> is that still a thing? The, 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 lingerie, the lingerie Bowl, is that still a thing? It, it can't still I, be I on. Didn't, I didn't know it was ever a thing, really. Yeah, it used to occasionally be on TV, and, and I, I loved it. <laughs> It was like lingerie football. Yeah. It was like in, it was women doing arena football like in skippy outfits and stuff. They would show it on on like Sunday afternoons. <laughs> so then uh let's see uh Butterfuco has been doing little appearances. He appeared on the Judge Janine show on 2009. And then in okay. 2012, he appeared on the Fox News program Justice with Judge Janine. And then in 2013, he was in an episode of Judge Alice. Oh, he was in the underground comedy movie. Apparently, he's been in a couple of little movies like that. Okay. So he has a little name for himself, but nothing major, it looks like. So basically, he's no Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. Who always has a cheap ass movie coming out somewhere? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, he's got a little name for himself. Do you know why he's got a little name for himself? Huh? Because really, who is going to? Sorry, it's who's okay. going to want to hire this person after they heard that he got his wife shot? Eleanor. Because famous is famous, and famous sells tickets. Yeah. So we can't. There's one last. We can't all afford Rod Jeremy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's one last video that I wanted to put on here, and it's it. I love it so much, and I've watched it a million times, and it's just so fucking great. It's the nothing's gonna stop us now scene from the movie The Skeleton Twins. Okay. Is that where it about, was from? Yes. Yes, I have talked about this scene before. It's a scene about halfway through the movie Skeleton Twins, which is a low-budget 2014 indie dramedy that nobody saw in theaters. <laughs> and there's a good reason for it. It is sad. It is depressing as hell. It's about two twins who try and kill, who try and commit suicide at the same time, and then they try and come together and help each other out. It's light on laughs, despite the fact that it has it stars two of the funniest people on the fucking planet. There's hardly any laughs in it at fucking all. 
But this one scene happens in the middle of the movie. It seems to be airlifted into the film because the film is a real depressing fucking film that has to do with suicide and it's yeah. a drama and it's real dry. But God damn, this is one of my favorite scenes of all time. This is one of my favorite scenes ever. It, it, it plays like a good SNL skit. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a wonderful scene, and I've talked about it so many times here on the podcast. I love you, honey. That I I I searched Skeleton Twins to see if the if the the video if that one scene from the movie was on YouTube, and it was, and I got excited, so I put it on the list because it's a great fucking scene, and I love this scene, and I love the actors, and I love the movie. Maxwell, why are you knocking? Why are you knocking, Maxwell? Oh, you're trying to show people how your weapons work? Okay, we'll keep working on your devices. So anyway, that's it for homework this week. Uh, it went on a little long, but we had a lot to talk about. Yes, and I sincerely did. hope that your eyes, minds, and pores have all been suitably opened. Ah! Ah! I don't know how... Ah! That's pretty good. But just wait one second there, Buckaroo Bonsai. I don't think you're getting out of here that easily. Don't forget next week homework home next week's homework assignment. And for next week, I wanted to go different, and I was searching YouTube for something different for us to watch. So what we're watching is an odd 2016 hour-long documentary. It's called Living Dolls, the subculture of doll collecting. Okay. That's, it's from that's, it's from a fairly cheesy YouTube page called Real Stories. And it's filled with a bunch of hour-long documentaries, and, and, and they all they all seem pretty goddamn cheesy. Uh, the page is filled with such eye-rolling documentaries as Kids, Knives, and Broken Lives. Oh, God. And the ridiculously steamy-sounding Divorce, Jewish Style. Living Dolls and what? Living Dolls, the subculture of doll collecting. If you go, if you just search real stories, Living Dolls, it'll pop up. Ah, I'm drinking a Tecate Light. It's Mexican beer for white people. Well, that that works out a little better because when you first said it, I had seen a Vice documentary about about old men that dress up as dolls. Uh. So doll collecting, I can handle doll collecting. I can't handle that shit again. Well, well, this one should be good because it, it it's just general doll obsession. So you got Barbies, you've got sex dolls, like all dolls. Yeah. There's one guy who's obsessed with Barbies, and then there's one guy who's who's obsessed with uh, dressing up sex dolls and treating them like his girlfriend and stuff. So, yeah, it should be some creepy fun. Good. And good. If, you, if you can't find it, I, I can send you the link. Yeah, um, send, me to, to send me the link, and I'll send you the link to the other thing. Okay. Which hopefully maybe we do that for the next homework. I would rather your opinion first, but it's a, a it's – an orientation film for Scientology. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So send me that link and I'll send you my link. And so keep the faith, brothers. And we will see you next week for homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut. Oh, no.